Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I am so delighted to be back to your screens. Yet again, it's a Wednesday date for us ladies. And it's a, it's a humbling experience that we have had just to journeying together, inspiring one another, and just encouraging one another in this journey of life. I trust that you have been well and you are ready and hungry to learn and just to be to, 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 to draw in from the wisdom of God about what God has called us to be and about different spaces that we are in in this journey of life. And with me as always is my mama, mm -hmm. Pastor Miriam, Karibu Sana. Thank you. And uh, just to have a short recap of what we went through the last episode, we were just laying a foundation, we were looking at uh, uh, the lineage and the history where Hagar was coming from and just uh, uh, how she came into the family of Abraham and and Sarah and today I just want to pick up uh, in the same momentum that we uh, we were in by just uh, reading scripture mm -hmm. from Genesis 16 uh, so that we can be able to see uh, to have a platform where we can be able to pick a few things from uh, in relation to Haggai so Genesis Chapter 16, I will read. Now Sarai, Abraham's wife, had borne him no children, and she had an Egyptian maid servant whose name was Hagar. So Sarai said to Abraham, See now, the Lord has restrained me from bearing children. Please go into my maid. Perhaps I shall obtain children by her. And Abraham heeded to the voice of Sarai. Then Sarai, uh, Abraham's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, and gave her to her husband, Abraham, to be his wife. After Abraham had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, so he went into Hagar and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress became despised in her eyes. Then Sarai said to Abraham, My wrong be upon you. I gave my maid into your embrace. And when she saw that she had conceived, I became despised in her eyes. The Lord judge between you and me. So Abraham said to Sarai, Indeed, your maid is in your hand. Do to her as you please. And when Sarai dealt harshly with her, she, fell from, she fled from her presence. Now the angel of the Lord found her by the spring of water in the wilderness, by the spring of the way of Shar. Chapter 8, uh, verse 8, sorry. And he said, Hagar, Sarah's maid, where have you come from and where are you going? She said, I am fleeing from the presence of my mistress, Sarai. The angel of the Lord said to her, verse 9, return to your mistress and submit yourself under her. Verse 10, then the angel of the Lord said to her, I will multiply your descendant exceedingly so that they shall not be counted for multitude. 11. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Behold, you are with child and you shall bear a son. You shall call his name Ishmael because the Lord has heard your afflictions. Verse 12. He shall be a wild man. He shall he, his hand shall be against every man, and every man's hand shall be against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. Verse 13, Then she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her, You are the God who sees. For she said, 
Have I also here seen him who sees me? Mm -hmm. Verse 14. Therefore, the well was called Bear Lahai Roy. Observe it, observe it is between Kadesh and Bered. So Hagar bore Abraham a son, and Abraham named his son, whom Hagar bore Ishmael. Abraham was 86 years old when Hagar bore Ishmael to Abraham. Mm -hmm. God bless his word. Amen. The reason why I read this scripture is so that we can have a biblical journey of Hagar mm -hmm. and how a decision which was not instructed uh, from God. It was not an instruction from God. This was a decision made out of desperation mm -hmm. that we find ourselves making such decision so often in life because you have been yearning for something, you have been waiting for something and it does not seem to be forthcoming and sometimes we make hasty decisions and um, uh, desperate decisions that may not really uh, take us well mm -hmm. in this life. And we're going to be looking at what uh, Hagar had to go through because of a decision that was not God instructed. Remember that Abram had a promise from God and he was told that he was going to be a father of nations and God is not a man that he will lie it is just a matter of waiting upon the Lord until the fulfillment of his promise comes to pass Haggai was put in this position by Sarah who later on felt that the decision that she had taken now was not favoring to her. I'm looking at Hagar and thinking, this is a young girl mm -hmm. who was a maid or a servant to mm -hmm. Sarai for years. Mm -hmm. She had seen uh, many things in this home. Maybe she had even overheard conversations between Abraham and Sarah discussing their inability to sire children. Mm -hmm. Maybe they had even discussed with other servants at a point somewhere mm -hmm. how sad it is that this very wealthy man, this very wealthy family mm -hmm. do not have an heir. Mm -hmm. People do that. Of course, yes. And then one day Sarah calls her and tells her, you know what? You have lived with me. You have served me. I'm now elderly and old. And God has not blessed me with a child. I would want you to be with my husband so that you can bear us a child. I imagine she was frightened. I also imagine she could have been excited. Mm -hmm. What a privilege. It is to be trusted by my mistress enough to be the one who she feels could be enough for her to bear uh, the hair mm -hmm. of this family. Mm -hmm. And being a young girl, I'm thinking today, young girl, uh, you are in a family, this family is wealthy, you lack nothing. You are having a good life. And then all of a sudden, the wife or the mother of the home tells you, because I am not able to give my husband this one thing which is very important, could you become my co-wife or could you become my husband's concubine so that you can be able to give us a child? And I'm thinking a million things that will be going through the mind and you're thinking, yes. Mm -hmm. 
I will be in the same space and position as the madam of the house. And I see a lot of things being ignited in, 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 in huggers, life, thoughts and, and life and thinking. I'll have a share mm -hmm. even in this great wealth. Mm -hmm. If I am able to get pregnant for this man, I will have an, a different respect mm -hmm. even even the servants now will start calling me madam status status ch will change mm. so and therefore uh, new dreams begin to 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 ignite for Haggai but this is very short-lived because with that excitement and after she has been with Abraham of course, it depends the wife. Akuna, akuna wife mwenye atasikia vizuri when the husband is sharing the intimacy with another woman. And therefore, the woman nature mm. of Sarah mm. ika pada. Rose up. Ika sema, hey, you think just because I gave you the opportunity to be with my husband, now your status have changed. And things began, began to go south for Hagar. Mm. Maybe, can we put in perspective what, what these decisions, these desperate decisions sometimes we take in life, can the consequences of them, and looking at Hagar's life, how, how that, would have, that decision meant or how that decision impacted Hagar's life? Well, like you put it very well. I'm just seeing the picture come out very well. Mm. Yeah, every good girl would want to feel good looking at an old man who is very wealthy, mm. having no hair. Yeah. And uh, then <laughs> here I am, they have asked me to stand in the gap. Yes. And of course, if I give a child, mm. that is to mean everything that belongs to this man yes. should be transferred to the account of my mm -hmm. son. Mm. So I'll be very rich. Yes. I'll be the one talking. Yes. And this and I think um, she went too fast to embrace mm -hmm. the outcome. Mm -hmm. She went too fast to celebrate mm -hmm. the results mm -hmm. before she had even gone half the journey. Yes. And tried to despise. Mm -hmm. You remember what the Bible told us that um, Sarah became despised in her in her presence. Mm -hmm. Sarah became Sarai then, mm -hmm. Abraham and Sarai, mm -hmm. became like, oh, these are my, she's now gonna be my puppet. Mm -hmm. I'm going just to feel like, I'm, I'm now the, the, you know, like a change of, um, change of uh, status. Yes. Like I'm now the one talking, mm -hmm. this old woman. Like she will realize that you know, they, they need, need me. me. Yeah, yes. I am the most important thing that mm. has happened mm. to them. Mm. And, um, Having been old enough, Sarai had seen many things. Yes. She must have seen so many things. Indeed. Including being given to a beam to the king of Egypt mm. for the safety of the husband. Yes. I think Sarai had had so many experiences that it's like, oh, what is so important about life now? Mm. What is so important about this living? Mm. Having been changed for a life, mm. having been given to a king, <gasps> having been seen that uh, is it possible, having tried maybe doctors, and now here I have, you know today what they are doing, mm. is, is it surrogate? Surrogate, yeah, yeah surrogacy. Surrogacy. Mm. I'm almost thinking it's like surrogacy. Mm. And now I have to place my thumbs on the table. Mm. And uh, you have to go by my, my demands. Mm. I think that's, that is quite, happening even now, yeah. where you will find the surrogacy is increasing. We were discussing with a friend about it another time and uh, we were like, oh, and when this child grows up, mm -hmm. what, will be the, the, what will be the situation? Mm. You now see what happened. She felt up all over. And uh, it's like Sarai had no breathing space. Yeah. It's like uh, the husband moved with everything that mm -hmm. belonged to mm -hmm. him. And, oh, he's in a new place mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sarai can live in her tent mm -hmm. and continue living her life 
without this sweetheart of hers. Mm. And the sweetheart now belongs to a young Egyptian girl. Mm. Remember where Haga is coming from. Mm. You remember the entrance of Sarai and her husband in Egypt yes. changed a lot of things. Mm. The king went first to pick the woman, Sarai, yes. to be one of the many wives that he had. Every beautiful woman in Egypt belonged to belonged the king. To the king. Mm. So if this is the daughter of the king, mm. or if she has seen this culture, when she's being given out to the king, to this prince mm. called Abraham, mm. there is no problem. Yeah, and uh, it's like she's the new bride now in the house, mm. and all the servants now must sing and add them to her. Mm. She forgot that um, she was here by virtue of being a servant. Yes, and like we said earlier, it is important to remember everybody who helped you to climb up when they allow you to uh, climb up through yes, their yes, platform. Yes, 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 and. Uh, Sarai, though old, I think she woke up from some kind of slumber mm. and realized, oh, the ball is not moving in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some defense must be raised mm. and some strong player must mm. be aroused Boundaries. in me. Mm. Lines must be drawn in mm. with, we call it whitewash. Yes, like yes. ash must be poured on the markings mm. and tell her your, your role in this was only according to me. It was this. But you know, the Bible also says, if a man and a woman share a bed and become in, intimate, they become one. one. So Sarah you had also forgotten that bit of it. <laughs> Apart from that, this young girl, and of course you know the reaction of young girls. Mm. You know the way they want to show everybody else they are the most, mm. you know, they are the ones occupying the beauty mm. space mm. and nobody else can beat them. Yes. Yeah, so this is a message that should be drawn to young women. Mm who in one way mm -hmm. think they have won the battle, mm. and on the other hand, mm -hmm. someone is using them for their own advantage. You're right. They must sit down and do every calculation. The, what we call in, um, in, the, in the accounting, there's something we call debits and credits. Mm -hmm. Like the drawing out and the bringing in. Mm. Like draw your T account well and sit down and see what is coming in and what is going out. Mm. So that you don't have so much has come in yes. and then you have drawn all of it all of a sudden. Yes. And then you are left in a position of a deficit. Mm. Like now what do I do? Mm -hmm. Because according to my understanding and mm -hmm. looking at, at it from an accounting perspective, mm -hmm. this is what happened to Haga. Mm -hmm. A lot was deposited in her account. Mm -hmm. And then before she could realize, she drew all of it mm. and went looking down on her mistress mm -hmm. who had elevated her to this level yeah. and before she could know it it's like oh you have drawn everything i gave to you mm. you have even over gone Dra overboard yeah, yeah. overdrawn yeah. yeah you are overdrawing mm. you're coming over this side mm. and you really think that terms and conditions that are applied will still remain the same yeah we have now to to change terms and conditions mm. and you see the bible says it's like a uh, Whatever was meted on her by Sarai yes. is what made her to run away. Yes. She was not told, pack your bags. Mm -mm. This will come, the packing of the bags will come later when already Sarai has had her blessing mm. and has born mm. a child, a child mm. Isaac, in mm. her old age. Yes. Or in the old age of the man. Yes. But now here, mm -hmm. fire beat her. And she had the chuck of the coals were lit too hard mm -hmm. that she had just to pack her items and run away, even without giving notice. Mm. She looked like, oh, is the mistress here? Is the master around? And she packed, packed, packed mm -hmm. and went running, mm -hmm. like many house helps do sometimes. You leave her with the baby. And then you, the neighbor the, calls you and, and tells, tells you, you, oh, the baby is crying. <laughs> And we can't see Rosaline. Mm. Where is she? Mm. Or did you send her to do shopping? Mm. And before you realize, she has packed her things and 
ran away. Mm. Those are things that are very normal in our lives. Mm. So Sarah is, no, Hagar is met by an angel of the Lord, as the Bible says. And uh, where are you coming from? And, and where, where are you, are you going? going? Yeah. It's like the angel is saying, why are you leaving? Mm. And surely with your pregnancy, mm. do you think you're going anywhere? She, at that point, she does not even realize that she is with a child. It's like uh, she's been misbehaving mm. around her mistress. Mm. And the mistress, although she may not have had an experience of pregnancy, mm -hmm. knows, oh, this is how they behave. I mm. have seen many of them. This mm. is how they behave. Mm. And, but hers now is above board because she is even abusing me. Mm. She is telling me, get out of here, you barren woman. I imagine uh, uh, at some point when she realized now, like, I, I, I share your husband, uh, you know, I have an equal space uh, in your husband's bed. And maybe at some point, Sarah would call uh, Haggai to maybe give her instruction or to, to, to give her, uh, to ask her to do something and she would not respond to her, probably. She would be, be calling, Haga, Haga. And Haga is somewhere thinking, woman, please Stop do it her. yourself. Yeah. And this pained, this pained, uh, uh, this pained Sarah, like, uh, uh, how can this young girl that I have, ha has, has been my servant, that I have given favor to, to share this moment with my husband for the sole reason of siring a child now despise me, mm -hmm. you know. Mm. So uh, I, 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 I see a woman who has been pained, but interestingly has been pained by her own making, her yeah. own decision. Her decision, because... There are decisions in life we make out of desperation. Yeah. And um, this one is like a cultural decision, mm. traditional. These people, other people are doing it, and they are getting results. Maybe people around kept pestering her mm. and the husband mm. and saying, you surrogate, surrogacy is away. Mm. Just go for it. Mm. But they even overlooked the word God had given them. You know, like if God has spoken, even if it takes a hundred years, his word will come to pass. And because we are looking at Hagar, let's just go back to her and see that this girl with the traditions of Egypt, you know, she and having had uh, Abraham and Sarah, lived in Egypt and having come from the, uh, the other place, Babylon, mm. having come from uh, Mesopotamia, mm. there are so many traditional issues mm. that they are, they are, they are battering, mm. battling with. Mm. They are battling with. They are trying to look for solutions. Mm. And it's like whenever they move to a new tradition, mm. the tradition just engulfs them. Yes. Yeah, has an input, mm -hmm. has a share in their lives mm. that they are not independently able to mm. make decisions. Mm -hmm. So do you see how the borrowed tradition of Egypt yeah. brings in Hagar, then brings in an issue that God had already promised, had already promised that he would give a son of promise. And they are trying to help God through Hagar. I am sure there are so many people, both men and women, mm -hmm. that have been used by other stronger people to try and get results for something that was promised. I, I, I can't help but uh, go back in an experience that I have had personally. Mm -hmm. Uh, after being married for many years mm. and without an issue of a child, mm. uh, people start talking. Yeah, yeah. People start asking questions. Mm -hmm. People start commenting. Mm. And what people do not understand is that you, who is in the situation, are also asking 
very painful questions yeah. to yourself, mm -hmm. to your spouse, mm -hmm. to, to God. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember scenarios of we would go for, for family gatherings mm -hmm. and an auntie somewhere would, or someone somewhere would comment, uh, and so you, you keep on coming to other people's baby showers and tea parties. When are we coming for your own? What? Uh, uh, at some point, uh, I, I, I was doing some, taking care of uh, some few kids here and there. And just, uh, I remember this uh, specific family that uh, the, both parents were very sickly and they had a, a, a young child and this child became like my own. Like I, would, I was there like the mother because both the father and the mother were really very sickly. Mm -hmm. And uh, at another point, uh, another relative went on to say, eh, na ukona bidia kulea watoto wa wenyewe wako utalea lini you know s mm -hmm. such comments would you like to say that in uh, uh, the other language like uh, what i mean <laughs> so <laughs> not that i do not understand this is why yeah. of ours yeah. a comment would go like ah and you are very diligent taking care of other people's children when yeah. will you ever take care of your own wow. and you know i put I put myself, or I, I tried to put Sarah in such a situation, mm -hmm. and this was a desperate woman. Yeah. Such spaces can make you feel desperate. It's true. Very, very desperate. Mm. You go to hospitals, you, mm -hmm. you go for different tests. Mm -hmm. I tell you, those fertility uh, uh, procedures mm -hmm. are not nice. Mm -mm. They, they are, are not, not nice. They, they are, are not, strenuous they are emotionally, friendly, physically, physically, in every other way. They even affect how you function, mm. even how you are able to relate with your spouse. And I, I, I try to imagine Sarah was in that space. Mm -hmm. And she was only doing this probably thinking, yes, I remember God gave us a promise. Yeah. But it doesn't seem to be coming. Mm. And and I'm I'm growing old. Yeah. I am past my childbearing years, mm. and this man needs an heir. I just need to do something to save my family or to bring back the honor and the respect to my family, so that my husband's name there will be a continuation. She she was coming from a very good place because. She was doing this for her husband and for her family and the continuation of her family. But the fact remains, it was a desperate decision. And the fact remains that God had given a promise. Mm -hmm. And the fact remains, mm -hmm. though he may tarry. Yeah. He will surely come. Though he may tarry, mm -hmm. he will surely come. Mm -hmm. And therefore, my... My, 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 my encouragement to the woman or to the man or to the girl or to any person who will be watching this and will be, will be listening in is that remember that if God has said, if God has given a promise in your life, if God has, has spoken a word in your life, it doesn't matter how long is going to take but surely god is not a man that he should lie and he is a faithful god in that space of waiting keep on remembering that god is a faithful god in that loneliness in that space of questioning in that space of people are, are are trying to figure out do you even understand whether you are coming going or already gone mm -hmm. Stay in that space of trusting and waiting on God because his promises are yes and they are amen. And if, if he has said it, he shall surely do it. And therefore, if we can draw any valuable lesson from tonight's show is that keep on waiting on God. Don't make that desperate decision. Don't be quick to help God. Because he is God all by himself. And believe it that he is going to do it for you. 
though he may tarry he shall surely come through for you be blessed child of god you are so loved child of god until next time keep on tuning in like subscribe and share see you next time god bless you